Linked list, one of the most fundamental data structures in computer science and a must know topic for coding interviews. Unlike arrays, linked lists don't require you to predefine a size. They allocate memory dynamically as elements are added. In this video, I will break down what a linked list is and how it works internally, the different types of linked list, most common linked list operations and some of the most common linked list interview patterns. Let's get it started. So what exactly is a linked list? A linked list is a linear data structure made up of nodes. Each node contains two parts. A value, the actual data you want to store and a pointer or reference to the next node in the sequence. Unlike arrays, where all elements are stored together in a single continuous block of memory, the nodes in a linked list can be scattered across memory. What keeps them connected are those pointers linking one node to the next. This structure makes linked list highly flexible. You can grow or shrink them dynamically. But this flexibility comes with a trade-off. Since the elements are not stored together, you can't jump directly to a specific item like you can with arrays. Types of linked list Before we discuss common types of linked list, I want to quickly tell you about algomaster.io, a platform I built to help you master software engineering interviews. Here I have put together a free resource where you can learn and practice the most important DSA patterns that show up often in coding interviews. You will also find resources on system design and other interview preparation topics. Depending on how the nodes are connected, we can categorize them into three common types singly linked list, doubly linked list, and circular linked list. Let's break them down one by one. In a singly linked list, each node contains a value and a pointer to the next node. And that's it. It's simple to implement and memory efficient. But there is a downside. If you need to go backwards, there is no easy way. You would have to start from the head and traverse again until you reach the previous node. A doubly linked list takes things one step further. Each node has two pointers, one pointing to the next node and one pointing to the previous node. This means you can move both forward and backward, which makes certain operations much more efficient. But the trade-off is that it uses extra memory to store the additional pointer, and it introduces a bit more complexity in updating links. Double link lists are widely used in real-world systems like LRU caches and text editors. And finally, circular link list. A circular link list is a variation where the last node points back to the first node instead of null. This forms a loop. You can start at any node and keep going until you are back where you started. It's great for problems where you need cyclic behaviors, like round-robin scheduling. Now that we know what linked lists are and the different types, let's go over the most common operations you will perform on them. First, traversal. Traversal means you start at the head and move one node at a time. This operation takes O of n time because in the worst case, you might visit every node. Next, search. If you want to find whether a value exists in a linked list, you must start at the head, check each node one by one until you find the value or reach the end. Since this is a linear search, it takes O of n time in the worst case. Next, insertion. There are different cases depending on where you are inserting a node. Inserting at the beginning. This is the fastest case. All you need to do is create a new node, point its next to the current head and update the head to the new node. It takes constant time since there is no traversal involved. To insert at the end, you would have to start at the head, traverse the list until you reach the last node and update the last nodes next to the new node. To insert at any specific position, you must traverse to that position and adjust the pointers to insert the new node. Again, this requires O of n time in the worst case. Like insertion, deletion can also vary based on position. Deleting from the beginning is fast. Just move the head pointer to the next node. This is constant time since no traversal is needed. To delete the last node or a node in the middle, first you have to find the previous node. Update its next pointer to skip the node you want to delete. Since there is no backward pointer in a single link list, this means you would need to traverse from the head, which takes O of n time. Here is a summary of time complexities of various operations in a linked list. Now let's talk about some of the most frequent linked list patterns that show up in coding interviews. First, fast and slow pointers. Here is how it works. You use two pointers, the slow pointer moves one step at a time, and the fast pointer moves two steps at a time. This simple trick allows you to solve problems like cycle detection. If there is a loop, the fast and slow pointers will eventually meet. Next, linked list in place reversal. The challenge is to reverse the direction of pointers so the last node becomes the new head. We can do it in place by maintaining three pointers at previous, current and next node. And then walking through the list and flipping the pointers one by one. I have made dedicated videos on these patterns, so you can check them out if you want to dive deeper. Another common trick is using dummy nodes. A dummy node is just a placeholder node that you insert before the real head of the list. It eliminates messy special cases like, what if we delete the head? What if insertion happens at the very beginning? With a dummy node, you treat the head like any other node, so your logic stays uniform and your code gets much cleaner. I hope this video gave you a good introduction to linked list. If you want to practice coding problems related to it, check out algomaster.io, where I have selected high quality problems and categorized them into patterns. You can check out the full DSA and lead code patterns playlist here. Make sure to subscribe so you don't miss my upcoming DSA videos. Thanks for watching and I will see you in the next one.